good to see y'all. We are uh, in the holiday spirit. When I say holiday spirit, I mean Thanksgiving. And uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Better than any deer stand anywhere. Yep. So uh, let's sing God's praises this morning. It is a wonderful day to be a Christian. It's a plum happy day. Thank you. 
Oh, you can watch him from right there and follow along. So I've been wanting to do that ever since I saw him there for the first time. And then we did a we did a uh, a deal at uh, where Woodland Hills, and and they did that. And I thought, well, wait a minute, he didn't make that up. <laughs> so that's a real thing. So I didn't know if he was just kind of winging it, but that's yeah, someone actually did that. So that is awesome.
we thank you for you. Lord God, we come here to this building today as a group of believers having nothing. Lord, the things that we think we possess, we know, Lord God, that one day they will fade away. Lord God, even the ideas that we have, Lord, if there's any truth in them, Lord, it's because you are truth. Lord, the way that we walk, if it's a way of truth, it's because you are truth. Lord God, I pray that today that we would fall humbly before you because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord God, we love you and we trust you. We thank you for the things done this last week in your name. Lord God, that you would receive all the honor and the glory. Help us, Lord God, to love you more and more. Help us, Lord God, to reach out to other people because of that love in your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And you may be seated. Good morning and welcome to New Hope. Trust that you will feel right at church this morning. My name is Scott. I'm assistant pastor at New Hope, and we are delighted and honored that you are here. If you are visiting with us for the first time, I want to let you know how much we appreciate you being here. And I also want to invite you to fill out this contact card that you will find attached to your bulletin. If you wouldn't mind filling that out and you can tear that off along the perforation and then just put it in the offering plate at the end of the service. We might have a record of your visit. If there's any way that we can help you, you can indicate that if you would like to visit from Pastor Tony. If uh, you have a prayer request, you would like to share anything like that, you can do that on that contact card and just put that in the offering plate at the end of the service. But we so much appreciate you being here and uh, you are a blessing by being here, but we want to uh, be a blessing in return. So if there's anything that we can do for you, uh, please contact us and let us know. At this time, we're going to stand, if you're able, for our Bible reading. And as you look for uh, 1 uh, Kings chapter 21 for our Bible reading. First Kings chapter 21, we will dismiss Children's Church. So Children's Church, you may be dismissed at this time. Boy, they're so quiet this morning. Must have been from that traveling back in time in the middle of the night, I'm not sure. But, uh, so if you uh, have a child that would like to go to Children's Church, they are welcome to go. If they haven't been before, you're welcome to go with them and uh, make sure that they're comfortable and see what Children's Church is about. It's through the door at the back of the auditorium to your right just a few feet away in hallway number three in the children's church room there. First, uh, first Kings chapter 21, we'll be reading the first three verses for our Bible reading this morning. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the money worth of, or the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God that we have in our possession this morning and in our language. We thank you for a pastor that preaches the truth in love, and we ask that the Holy Spirit would go from person to person this morning, and that we would be receptive both individually and collectively to what the uh, Word of God would have for us, that we might be drawn closer to you in our Christian walk. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This next week we have a couple of things that are coming up that are really, really, really important to each and every one of us. One is on Tuesday we all have the right to go and vote. And I
prompt you all, if you haven't already done it, to go do that. Because this is how God, through his people, create a way to change our world. Second of all, this next week, next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating uh, Veterans Day to all of those men, men and women who actually stood on battlegrounds, whether it be here or overseas, to fight the battle. I'm going to read a verse here that really caught my eye this morning as I was going over my devotional. Psalms 25 of the King James Version states, We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. We have a flag in this country, the red, white, and blue as it's been called throughout the years. We all know the story. And if you don't know the story, I'll be glad to tell you after service. But the whole idea is, is it's a banner. We have a banner that's even greater than the red, white, and blue. And that banner is the, the blood of Christ that was upon a, um, the cloth when he died on the cross and was put, uh, put into the grave. The blood that was shed. Our flag actually does have some resemblance to the red, white, and blue. Uh, to that particular thing. But I, the reason I want to sing this this morning is God put it on my heart to say that God bless the USA.
get to vote on Tuesday. Important, important, important that Christians do their part in every part of life. That uh, you are the kind of workers that you ought to be, the kind of uh, uh, parents and children that you ought to be. In every part of life, a Christian ought to be exemplary in what they do. It's what God has called us all to do. Um, this month, we're going to be taking a look at, um, at, an, at an idea that uh, God has given us something very special. Uh, you know, this idea about voting, and let me give you this to uh, uh, vote your Christian values. Uh, if you don't have any idea what people stand for, uh, this is the information age. No need for you to be without information. Google it. We've done some of the work for you. There's some information back here on the table about where people stand and what people stand stand for. Um, here's an average uh, campaign uh, commercial for you. I stand for the people. Well, who in the world don't stand for the people? Who's, who's going to tell you? Whose commercial is going to say, look, I'm going to do the best I can do, but I don't really stand for the people. Uh, don't listen to the commercial. Google it. What is this? How has this person voted? And then look at what has God called me to to do and to stand for? Not necessarily what's good for me, but what is what is God? What are the principles? And so, because why? Because we are a principled people. It's kind of what we're going to talk about this morning. The principles of the Christian life. You see, what happens when somebody comes to know Christ is they see a principle. The principle is that man without Christ is lost and on his way to hell. Now, I know we don't use hell that much anymore, the word, but it exists. You don't want to go there. And the only way to miss it is through Christ. And what happens when you are born into God's family, you receive a heritage. Now, if you marry into a family or are born into a family or are adopted into a family, what happens is you also receive a heritage. And some of the stuff is awesome. Some of the stuff is weird. My wife and I, we have this conversation about this time every year. About when it's, all, you know, when it's appropriate to start celebrating Christmas. Uh, I, what? See, we're not having it here. But the Bible teaches after Thanksgiving. Okay, no, that's not true. I hope the Bible teaches. It's only what common sense teaches. So, but anyway, we're, but, but, but different families do different things. I remember being thrown into a shock the first time we sat down for Christmas at their house and they handed out Christmas presents and wanted you to open them one at a time. Like, that's the weirdest family tradition I've ever seen, where you have to open your present while everybody watches. Because I remember thinking, what if I don't like it? <laughs> then I act like I do like it. Like, these are awesome slippers. <laughs> how, did you, how did you possibly know that I wanted slippers? <laughs> this is weird. But that's a family thing, man. It's not weird for them. It's like, hey, I, went, I, I spent a lot of time looking at it for this for you, so I want to make sure that, that you know, that I know that I'm watching you do this. <laughs> and some different family things, right? I mean, I don't know what your family thing is. Maybe crazy sweater or whatever, or, or I don't know how you do it. Maybe I've heard of families having, instead of turkey and dressing, um, how, how some people have like Mexican food on Thanksgiving. There you go. Some people do that. Somebody at our house mentioned going to the Old Miss Mississippi State game for Thanksgiving. Not going to happen, Captain. Right? I like the traditional thing. But when you're born into the family of God, you accept. You are born into a family unit. You're born into a heritage. You're born into certain things that are what they are. And we're going to talk about it, how, how that there's this worldwide, universal heritage that you and I have. And it doesn't matter what your color is, what your background is, uh, how long you've been born into this family. If you are a child of God, you have this heritage together. We are in the same family. We have the same heritage. We have this, and, and they're all over the world. That we have this in common. And we got to hold on to it. And there are people today who are struggling over it. And that, that, that it is of, of great value. And then today is a day that is, 
uh, that is national. Of course, there's always a national day. But today is a national pray for the persecuted Christians of the world day. Where, where we need to take some time and think about those people who are standing for the faith in this world today. A Christian dies every five minutes for their faith. If you don't uh, get the voice of the martyrs, you can. if you have Facebook, you can get it on Facebook. They'll send you regular updates. These people who are dying and suffering for the faith. Today I want to take some time just kind of give you an idea of the heritage that we have. We're going to look at a video here in just a second. But even this week, we hold this heritage. That's why we do things like the Operation Christmas Child Box. We're going to talk about them here in, uh, in two weeks. But 230 that you guys have provided, some of you came and packed them yesterday, and many of you brought the uh, supplies over the last several months, uh, uh, last couple months, and the things that you've done, even this last week, to reach out to the love of Jesus Christ. But it's because we have a heritage. The garage sale that they had, Tina and this uh, uh, Barnick and, and uh, so many, they had that to try, to try to reach out to these young kids in the nursery. The, the, the uh, fifth quarter that they had here um, uh, Friday night for the kids to try to reach out with the love of Christ. I mean, you've got to love Jesus to do that kind of stuff right there to hang out with kids till, till the next day. But, but, but it is important. And we need to be praying for one another because we have a heritage that's important. Travis, you don't mind playing that video for me, please. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kadus, 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 शुक्र दाग करते हैं आप दादा इस सुबह के लिए आप दादा कि तुम्हें हमारी ज़िंदगी में बख्शा कि नहीं सुबह देख सके आप दादा आप दादा तेरा शुक्र दाग करते हैं बच्चों के लिए आप दादा Today in Pakistan, we Christians are second-class citizens. Though we have committed no crime, we are ostracized and banished to the lowest place in society.
to study his word. For while our country has turned its back on us, God has not. Sometimes it is not easy. The loss, the injustice. So please remember to pray for us. That we will continue to live together in fellowship. That we will continue to see the joy of the Lord in our lives that we will persevere in our faith no matter the cost. And please remember, we are praying for you. together as believers, not because they didn't have anything better to do, but because they're committed to a heritage that they were given from, from the Lord. They've chosen a lifestyle that they know is going to make them less in their community, less in their culture. But they know that it's real. And that really is the heritage that you and I have been given. The heritage that God is real. That there's something bigger than just this stuff that we see. Something bigger than the stuff that we have. The stuff that we can earn. The position that we can gain. So today what we want to do before we get started. We just want to take some time and pray for the people who are all over the world are not as fortunate as we are to be able to worship in freedom. Who are indeed persecuted. Next week Dr. P will be here. We have um, raised the money to build a church in a, in a place where, where we planted a church, where they're meeting now underneath the trees, um, and there's the money to build the church. But the problem is the uh, India has decided that they don't want Christian, the Christian influence in their culture. And so they fight every turn uh, anything that is Christian. And so there are all these... Um, uh, things that they want us to do in order to have a church and they keep fighting it at every corner. And um, they're starting to see people who are, are beaten now in India and Christians who are um, accosted and, and abused. And all over the world uh, this has happened, which is why it's so important that we pray and we fight these spiritual battles that we talked about here just a couple of weeks ago. So let's just take a little bit of time and just pray together for our fellow believers <coughs> all over the world and then I will finish this out. God, today as a group of believers, Lord, in a place like Brother John sang about, we have freedom. Freedom, Lord God, that we often use and misuse as freedom not to do what you've given us the ability to do. Lord, we have been given the ability here to serve you, and often we find ourselves too busy. Lord, we've given, been given the opportunity to love you and to reach out to other people and often find ourselves too preoccupied to do so. Lord God, we have been given the opportunity to boldly approach your throne of grace and prayer for people who are struggling, who all they've really asked from us 
is prayer. And Lord God, we can't find the time. Help us to make that a part of our daily prayer. Help us to make that a part of our life. To pray for those here and all over the world who are taking stands that hurt. But Lord, we know that will be rewarded in eternity. And Lord God, I pray that we would also be members of the fellowship of your suffering. As we look today at the heritage we've been given, I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to stand fast in it. In your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Today we look at what we've been given, what we have in faith in Christ. All through Scripture, what God has given is an opportunity. That's where the heritage begins. We look at it today in the example of a man named Naboth. Naboth had a vineyard next to the uh, city gate, city wall of an evil king named Ahab. Ahab looks one day and He's got nothing better to do. He's not doing right. And he sees Naboth's vineyard. And he says, man, you know what? That vineyard would be a great place for me to put a garden of herbs. So he goes down and he makes what we would consider a reasonable offer. He says, Naboth, I will give you what your vineyard is worth or more. That's what it says in our text verse. I'll give you more than what your vineyard's worth. I'll, find, I'll give you a vineyard that is better than your vineyard. Or, if you'd rather, I'll give you it in the price of money. Naboth says, God forbid that I should give unto you that which was given to me by my fathers. God forbid he had, Naboth, the Bible says, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard in Jezreel. Make perfect sense that a Jezreelite would live in Jezreel. Why? Because we're going to look at some things that are that are that are similar in our heritage and what we've been given in our faith. The faith that you have in Jesus Christ, how real is your faith? What would someone say? What would someone say if, if they said, listen, I'll give you a million dollars, I'll give you two million dollars. And all you have to do is promise never go back to church. Oh, you know, you can still work for the Lord, just don't go back to church. Don't go to church. Uh, just don't read your Bible. Just don't do X in your Christian life. You see, all of this has to do with our relationship with the Lord, our heritage, as it were. Let's look today at the heritage portrayed here. This heritage portrayed. What was a heritage? What is, why, who cares? But Tony, what's the big deal? Why did Naboth say, sure, I'll trade you this vineyard for a better vineyard? Surely there was a better vineyard. What is, the, what is the big deal? Here's the big deal. He says, God forbid that I would give that which my fathers gave to me to you. Notice this. First of all, in Genesis chapter number 17 and verse number 8, the Bible says, now when I carry you to this land, He's telling Abraham, when I carry you this land, this land full of milk and honey, I'm going to give you this land. And in this land, Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 8 says, now if you have the version app, you can look at all these verses. Y'all have run us very late, so shame on y'all. So I'm not going to read all of these verses verbatim. Please go back and look at them, resource, resource, resource them on version or look them up. But basically what, it, what the Bible says in Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 8, is I'm going to give you a land... And in that land, you and I are going to have a relationship. That's what it said in Genesis chapter number 17, verse number 8. That was the heritage. A place and a people. That was the heritage. The second thing, he says, not only is this a place and a people, but this is a place just for you and I. This place, the reason it's, that it's unique is this place is for you and I. God cares about you specifically. And the place that He gives you inside this relationship with Him is just for you and you and Him. Um, in Numbers chapter number 33, verse number 51 and 52, He says, now when you get to this place, this heritage that I'm going to give you, you drive everybody out. I don't want other people in there. Uh, it needs to be a place where there are no other people because they serve other gods. You'll end up serving their gods. That's not what we want. A place for you and I. The third thing about this heritage, he says, Leviticus chapter number 25, verse number 23. Once I give you this place, don't sell it. 
Don't give it up. This is your place. The fact of the matter is, if you'll look at the, the laws that they had when they sold or their place, there came this year of Jubilee. Um, um, uh, there's this regular year of Jubilee where the property went back to the people who sold it. You couldn't sell, according to the laws of the Jews, uh, property permanently. You could only sell it temporarily, and then it came the year of Jubilee when it went back to that person. And even someone who sold themselves into servitude on the year of Jubilee, they went back to being free. So you kind of had to do the math and say, I'll buy the property for this much because I know I can only keep it for this long. Either way, it was not, they could not sell the land permanently. That was the rule, that was the law. That was what God said. Why? Because I want this, this place to be about you and I. And this place, God wants a relationship with you. He wants your whole life to be about one thing, a relationship with you and Him. But Brother Tony, i got this stuff to do. Okay, but just as long as you understand, that's not God's plan for your life. His major plan for your life is about you and Him. The same happens in this law of relationship and salvation. What happens in the law of relationship and salvation, you see it in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery according to the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you. When you bow your heart and life to that salvation that Christ has to offer, He moves and takes residence in you. You, that land that you now have is the land of the heart. And Christ takes residence in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Same as it was back then, except now that land is the land of your heart. The land of the inner you where Christ takes residence. And he goes on to say, only you. Where you see in Titus chapter 2, verse number 12, or other places like 1 John, or in the book of John where the Bible says that, um, that, I want, that, that there needs to be this separation. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This idea that, that I don't want to share you with anybody else. Then we see this idea in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 14. Just like in the heritage that God gave the children of Israel, the same picture exists today where he says, don't quit. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 14. But continue thou in those things which you have learned and been assured of. This is the picture of that godly heritage which from the beginning, from Adam and Eve till today, till the time when Jesus Christ returns and, he, and the, the, the trumpet sounds and His people are called and He judges and sets everything straight, you are going to find that God has only one plan and that is a people for Himself, a people only for Himself and don't sell out. So Naboth says, will I sell you my vineyard? Let me think about it for another. I will not sell out to you. Not for something you think is better. Secondly, let's look at this heritage that is purchased. What was the purchase price? The purchase price, verse number 3, says, I won't sell you, God forbid, uh, in me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. He said, my fathers came here and fought for this. God gave my fathers this. My fathers gave it to me. It was passed down. He said, this is a heritage from God. Romans chapter number 5, verse number 7. The same is true for us. The Bible says, But scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would dare to die. But God commended love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen, this Christian heritage that you and I have, this relationship with Christ that we have, is because Christ loved us so much, He died for us. That's my heritage purchase. No, God forbid I would give that away for whatever this world says they have, whatever this world wants to trade it for. Don't trade your heritage. The people in Pakistan, the people in India, the, the, the people all over the world who are standing yet struggling in their lives. The people even here in the United States who have to take stands to do what they believe. <coughs> do it because it's real. And it's been a heritage purpose. It a purchase. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 38 through verse number 40, the Bible talks about the heroes of the faith and how that some of them even died standing for the faith. Read Fox the Book of Martyrs. Read all through Scripture. Read about Stephen 
Read about people who were willing to die but didn't like Daniel. And what you'll see is, is this, this, this hero mentality who says, I believe it. I've received the, 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 the heritage of the faith. I believe it and I'm not changing my mind regardless. And then in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 40, the Bible says, and so are some of you. And without you, their testimony is incomplete. You have the same testimony according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 40. Read it for yourself. The fact of the matter is, I'll read it. The Bible says this, God having provided some better thing for us. This is in the Hebrews 11, the heroes of the faith chapter. That they without us should not be made complete. So this is our heritage purpose, purchased. And we see our heritage prized or our heritage valued. What is the value of the Christian life? What is it that you want for your children more than anything else? What is it that you want for your family more than anything else in this world? What would you want them to be more than anything else? Think about it. Have you said it? I want them to be successful. Why? They're not going to keep it. I want them to be popular. Why? They're not going to keep their popularity. What do you want your family to have? What do you want to have in this life more than anything else? Because I'm going to tell you something. There are some things you can trade your Christianity for. There are some things you can, create, you can trade your Christian testimony for. But if they are cheap. Listen to what the king of Israel wanted to trade um, uh, this man his vineyard for. Listen to what the Bible said. This is, this is awesome. A lesser purpose. Listen to what it says. Ahab wanted what? Look at verse number 2. Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs. He's like, what? I'm raising <laughs> grapes here, bro. The number one, the, the number one and two most popular uh, products and things to raise in Israel, olives and, and grapes. He said, I want to grow some herbs. What, you want, you want to raise some dill? You're going to root up my grapes and raise some sprouts? Not negative, bro. Your herb garden? People grow herbs in their windowsill. You don't sell. I'm going to trade you my father's, father's, father's vineyard so you can raise herbs? Negative. Not going to happen. Why? It's lesser. And let me say this. This is what he says. I love this part. He says, God forbid that I should what? If you're looking at it. In verse number three, that I should what? The inheritance of my fathers under thee. Give. What did, did Ahab say give it to me? No. Ahab said, I'll give you something better for it. Naboth said, I don't care what you give me. Give me for it. You can double what you think is the value. It's still me giving it away. I don't care what you think you get by trading your Christian life and your Christian testimony. You just gave it away. You didn't properly value that thing. You trade your Christian life for whatever in this world. You gave it. You didn't trade it. You gave it away. There is nothing in this life worth the heritage of God Almighty. I remember the only new vehicle Rachel and I have ever owned was a Chevrolet Illumina. First year they came out with them. I remember after we sold it, sold it, seeing somebody else win it. The paint had almost rusted off the top, had three hubcaps on it. I remember the day when I thought it was so awesome, and I remember the day I saw it riding down the road like this. Go ahead and trade your Christian life. What you did was give it away. Ah, double the value. You did no such thing. Nothing in this world that has real intrinsic value that is not eternal. Nothing is of real value if you can't keep it. Listen to what the Bible says. Let me have it for a garden of herbs, a lesser purpose. Let me have it, verse number two. He says, because it's near my house. That's what the world wants to give you, convenience. 
We had all kind of convenience in the ball. We, this is a convenience-driven society. Yesterday we went to watch a ball game and we wanted lunch. So you know what we did? We, we decided we would have pizza. So my wife Googled the pizza place, called them, told them to bring it. That's it. That's what we did. Then we pulled out paper plates that we could throw away when we got done. And disposable glasses. That's how difficult lunch was yesterday. That's pretty convenient right there. We got lunch from the couch. If you want to know something, you Google it. Remember when you had, uh, uh, these kids, uh, y'all don't understand, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> When you, when, when you was going to do a project, you had to look it up. You didn't Google it. Uh, you actually had to wet their fingers, go to the library, and do a decimal something. Hear what I'm telling you? You had to go to the old, old library and pull it. This man just said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know. You got to look it up, reference that thing. Look, not today. Everything. You do Wikipedia, and you know everything. Listen, guys, but what we've done in making this an easier place to live in, and we just made it a more convenient place to sin. That's all we've done. I mean, they have prostitutes now on, on uh, whatever that, that website is. Uh, 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 don't say it because then it doesn't sound like you know. <laughs> but some websites, you can Google prostitutes. You can, and they have it where uh, some kind of escort thing. Somebody, yeah, you don't just do every <laughs> You hurt, you hurt. I'm telling you, you hurt yourself. <laughs> but look, we just made it an easier place to sin in. It's all we've done to our own self. The point is simply this, guys. Here's what Ahab wanted. He wanted his life to be more convenient. I want to raise some herbs to be convenient if Naboth would get out of the way. And let me tell you something about the Christian life. It's plumb inconvenient. It's plumb inconvenient to do the thing Jesus told you to do. It's hard. It's inconvenient. Nobody likes it. But especially when it starts affecting them. Especially when it gets in my business. But here we see Naboth, the judge of your life, have to take a stand and say, your convenience is not going to get in the way of my heritage. Temporary profit. <laughs> he said, I'll give you something better for it. Said, I'm not going to take temporary profit over my godly heritage. It'll be better for how long? Every day of my life, I realize and get up realizing I'm older than I was yesterday. And I start making weird noises and getting more doctors and more medicine. And I'm like, huh. It makes me think I ain't going to be here forever. Can't do what I used to do. Justin Hart bought a teenager knocker balls. Who knows what a knocker ball is? That's a great big old blow up inner tube you get inside of. Elijah was checking the other day, air one up, I got inside of it, and Elijah, for some weird reason, just ran up and knocked me over. <laughs> I just like a turtle, I'm laying there. <laughs> well, I'm down here. I got to knock a ball. It was uncomfortable getting knocked down. I remember getting knocked down and not being so uncomfortable. But listen, that's what life is. And you can trade whatever you want to trade for your Christian heritage, but you can take God's Word. It's temporary. And Naboth said, God forbid that I should give that which my fathers gave me to you because you think it's more profitable. Because you think you can give me more than it's worth. It's not. Last and number four. Look at how this heritage is personalized. If your godly heritage is not personalized. See these Operation Christmas Child boxes? Don't seem like much to you. I bet you everybody that packed them thinks it's personal. 
If you were one of the people over in Peru when we stumbled up on that Operation Christmas Child um, delivery thing, I guarantee you like, hmm. I guarantee if you looked it up and, 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 and you're a part of it, you're like, I want to give the love of Jesus Christ to somebody else. I guarantee if you know Jesus, in a real and personal way and understand that which He's called you to do. You're looking around to see how to do it. Hey, Billy Jean. Awesome. <laughs> Billy Jean knows she's been all over everywhere. Operation Christmas Child stuff and stuff. Why? It becomes, when it becomes personal, listen to what Naboth said. And it may not be, Operation Christmas Child may not be your thing, but doing something for Jesus will become your thing when you realize, why is it so important to Naboth? Naboth has some kind of personal connection. He understands his heritage is his heritage. Here's what he said. And Naboth said unto Ahab, God forbid it me. I, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Naboth said, this personal brother, this is personal to me. This means something to me. I'm not trying to give you what I think about it, Naboth said. I'm not telling you I would rather have a nicer vineyard. You think for one second Ahab didn't have a nicer vineyard to give Naboth? And do you think for one second Naboth didn't know that Ahab had a nicer vineyard to give him? But Naboth said, this is my personal heritage from God. And because of that, you got a 0% chance of getting it. Why? Because it's personal. But after all that, I want to say this and we'll close. Verse number 14. Verse number 14. The Bible says that they sent to uh, Jezebel say, Naboth is stoned. See, here's what Ahab did. Ahab went and flopped himself down on his bed. The Bible says, turn his face to the wall. <laughs> got to pouting and crying and carrying on. Jezebel, you know who Jezebel is. Uh, her name has become synonymous with difficult women. But Jezebel came to Ahab and said, What's wrong with you? I wanted Naboth's vineyard, he wouldn't give it to me. And Jezebel said, Get up and wipe your face off. You're the king. I will get you the vineyard. And so she sends and manipulates things and has people lie about Naboth and say, I want you to get up and say he's, he's blasphemed and, and, and blasphemed God and stoned him. Now we pick it up to verse number 14. They sent to Jezebel saying Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. See, she's making it right in her own mind. And Naboth, uh, for Naboth was alive, and is, uh, but is dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab uh, rose up and uh, went down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite and took possession of it. And now, if you're taking notes, you can write this down. And they did not all live happily ever after. Now let's go in. Here's how it went. Hey, uh, Naboth, give me the possession, give me the heritage of God to you, and I'll give you something better for it. Naboth said negative, and Ahab uh, threw a fit, and Jezebel had him killed, and Ahab ended up with what he wanted. That's it. We moved on. Next chapter. About somebody different. Uh, this is no story of David killed Goliath. This is no story of, of Daniel uh, prays anyway, goes to the lion's den, and the lions don't eat him, and he eats the eats the uh, his enemies instead. This is Naboth takes a stand, doesn't change his mind, and dies for the principle. <coughs> the question is this: How far are you willing to go for your heritage? As the musicians come, Rachel and Russ Scott, if you would please come. The question really boils down to this. What do you believe about what God has given to you? What is it worth? What are you going to do about it?
How serious are you going to take what God has given to you? Listen, this is awesome. This is, this is, this is great. What, we, what we've done and, and the money that we've sent to India, the, what we, what we actually have, still have uh, over half of them, but, but the money that we, we have to build this church, the money that, uh, that we're using to do the different things that we're, that we're doing, the people that we got to talk to this last week at different events, the tracks that were handed out. This is all the things that we're doing. Why are we doing it? The way that you treat other people, the way that you reach out to other people, the way that you attend, the way that you study, the way that you pray to the God of your heritage. Why do you do it? How serious are you about it? Are you ready to trade for something else? You know what's amazing to me? That God had the nerve, sent His Son down on the cross. Some people, honest to goodness, this is going to be amazing. One day, in heaven, some people will stand before God and God will say, Hey man, what is today? Third? Fourth? One day, God says, Even our every idle word, we're going to give an account for it. And, and, and literally, some people are going to have to give an account. And God's going to say, hey, you know, uh, we met together. All the, all the believers kind of assembled together on the fourth. Couldn't help but notice she's in a deer stand. Uh, what went on, bro? I, I couldn't help but notice you traded your heritage. You traded your heritage for a couple hours in the deer stand. Well, brother, it's not that big a deal. I guess it wasn't. I don't guess Naboth should have died, right? Look, it, it could have got a better one. I don't know. How serious are you about your hair? Tomorrow, you can get up a little earlier. You can spend some time with the Lord. You can pursue the heritage of God. Or, you can explain one day, while you were born into a Christian life, and you knew as much when you were born into the Christian life as you did when you died in the Christian life. God was like, I, can't, I don't understand why we didn't really grow in our heritage. I wanted to have this relationship with you in this, in this land and, and, and get some things accomplished. I couldn't help but notice that, that you really weren't, weren't available. You weren't engaged. That I gave you this heritage. I gave you this vineyard. And you sold it to Ahab for herbs? He planted herbs in it. I had this plan for your life. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you ought to see my bank account when I die. What? That ain't gonna work, man. That ain't gonna work. Don't trade most important thing in your life regarding words. Today I have to decide what is real and what's important and what I'll trade for as we stand together. There are people all over this world who believe me. They believe me. Do I believe me? Where am I with the Lord? Let's go. 543. 543. As we sing together, these altars are open. As we sing, you come.